باشیم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نويت الاربعين نويت الاعتكاف نويت الخلوة نويت العزة نويت الرياضة نويت السلوك نوينا الصيام في هذا اليوم من شهر رمضان السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Locals and viewers on the internet and whoever and then on Umma TV may Allah bless this channel and bless you and to everyone that this message is re reaching. We are trying our best, we are humble people trying to say something about clear the point of Tasawwuf and the principles of Tasawwuf and the humbleness that Tasawwuf shows to everyone. Prophet Sallallahu said ad nasiha Religion is advice ad nasiha ad nasiha Three times They asked him Ya Rasulullah To whom? Nasiha to whom? He said to Allah first Summa li rasulihi Summa lil mu'mineen First, to call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then call people to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then call people to be with together, to be with each other. Today we arrived the relationship, the discipline between murids to murids. As we said previously, that murids to murids must be taking care of each other and not to back back backbite each other not to throw false rumors against each other حفظ حرمتهم غائبين أو حاضرين you keep their honor present or absent when they are not present you are not allowed to backbite them. When they are present, you want to say something, you can say, but it's not adab. You cannot say in front of people. So always you have to keep good relationship, even though you saw something wrong coming from your brother, try to cover it. Or try to advise him. فَلَا يَخْتَابُ أَحَدًا مِنْهُمْ He must not backbite any one of them. And this is principles of tasawwuf. This is why, why we, we, we are learning this. And Prophet Wasallam has mentioned to us that وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا Many time he repeated, "Wala tatabaru, wala tanajashu." He is telling us not to do wrong things. So, in in tasawuf, first of all, we have to keep their honor honor in their absence, not to speak against them to be brother to brother or sister to sister. It is said that there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected mu'min from mu'min because two can be mu'min but they have this problem of backbiting each other. It's correct. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't back bite each other. وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا يَخْتَبْ بَعْدُكُمْ بَعْضًا Don't try to back bite or say false rumors. Because Allah take, because there is 
between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah might forgive you when you do istighfar. But between you and a brother, you might not forgive that brother. Allah has going to ask the oppressed to forgive the oppressor. If he say, no, Ya Rabbi, as it is mentioned in the hadith, then he is going to take the hasanat of the oppressor, give it to the oppressed. So you be loser. Second, we have to advise them, those who think that they are more with the sheikh and know many things from the sheikh. He has learned a lot. He, has, he, he can advise his brother and direct them to the right track, to the way that can reach them quickly to the sheikh. So these conditions, there are conditions for that. The nasih wal mansuh, for the one who advise and for the one who is being advised. Both of them, they have three principles. There is three principles in it. Fashirut nasih, the conditions of the one who is advising his brother. He must not make the advice in public. He might take his brother somewhere separate and speak with him privately. And takun nasiha sirran. The advice has to be secret. You cannot expose his mistake. You might he might run away. He thinks that he's doing well. But might be he's doing a mistake. So you have right to advise him, but in a decent way. Take him on the side, speak with him. First. Second, it has to be with leniency and softness. You cannot scold him and say, you did something wrong. If your brother did something wrong, cover him. You are not losing anything. You will be, Allah will be happy with you. Prophet ﷺ will be happy with you. Third, and takun bila istila, not your advice, not to show him that you are higher than him. Don't be proud of your advice to him. Try to advise him with humbleness, not with pride, that I am representative. I can advise you. Yes, you can advise him, but advise him softly, with lenient. That's why we saw the shiuch that they are inheritors of Prophet ﷺ. They have softness in their way of advising people. They bring the Advice through a lecture, through a nasiha, through an advice, through a sahba. And bring the issue inside so everyone will see, oh, as if that sahba is for me. That is, that sahba is for me. Everyone think that the sheikh is directing to him. But, and everyone feel that. But he is directing it to one, but everyone think because everyone has a defect. And not to make yourself you know better. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Holy Quran said, Kul innama ana basharun mithlukum. To his prophet, he's saying, say, ya Muhammad, to your sahaba, to the ummah, that you are only a human being like them. Look how much Prophet Wasallam did not say, I am your, like Sayyidina Musa, I am, I am Kalimullah, let me see you. He said, in, to, by every, everyone read that ayah every Friday, Surah Al-Kahf. Kul innama ana basharun mithlukum. I am only a human being like you. <coughs> 
I get revelation, yes. But he humbled himself in order that we can learn. So the one who has been advised has also three disciplines he has to follow. So both of them, the advisor, the one advising and the one who is being advised, they have three principles. The one who is advised, he has to accept the advice. Because he knows the sincerity and piety of his brother, the one who is advising him. So he has to accept the advice if that advice is really correct. And yakbal an nasiha. To say, yes, yes, my brother, I am wrong. I am learning, sorry. And yashkur al nasih. To thank the one who advised him or else you will be with that mistake all your life. The parents, they advise their children to be good from childhood. They send them to school to learn because learning alim is important. Without alim, no amal. There is no benefit of alim when there is no amal. And where is amal and no benefit when you have amal but no ilm. You cannot know the, the limits. So that's why you have to thank the one who guiding you. And most of the murids in Tariqa, most of the, of the work, the infrastructure work is done by murids. You understand why? Because relationship between Murid and Murid is easy. The relationship between Sheikh and Murid always you have to have to be within the limits of protocol, of forma uh, etiquette. etiquette. You cannot go out of that boundaries. But with Murid, you can joke, you can speak, you you have a familiarity. That's why they say don't don't lose familiarity with between you and your sheikh don't means don't exceed the familiarity keep it in limits to be near the sheikh too much is also will burn you don't think that if you you are at the house of the sheikh, you are in a po good position. No, you are, you are going to be questioned, you are going to be asked more than those who are coming, visiting and going. It's not like what the example I give, but I have to give that example. When you go to Mecca and pray, your prayer is considered, if you pray two rak'at, Every is considered considered hundred thousand prayer that you have prayed. When you pray in Mecca, in Kaaba, in the Haram, it will be multiplied by hundred thousand prayers, as if you have done hundred times, hundred thousand times two rakats. If you pray in Medina, it is said that your prayer is equal to, uh, to 10,000 times every prayer. So, also in what we are saying, you have to consider in the house of the Sheikh, you are going to be questioned for any mistake you will do it. Because it has a hurma. You have to give it its due right. 
like you go to Mecca, pray there, Allah gives you due right, Allah gives you reward. You took all that difficult way and to reach there, Mecca or Medina. That's why Allah gives a lot. Also, if you go to the Sheikh and stay too long there, you, you lose your family, you lose your relationship, your seriousness between the Sheikh and you. Then any mistake you do, you will be hit. Like Hadith of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that in Medina when you, where you stay, you have to know that in normal life, you go to a masjid in your house everywhere around the, around the world, if you, if you have a gossip, and you didn't act on it, or a bad inspiration, and you don't act on it, it's not written against you. But in Medina al Munawwara, if you do anything, if you have any gossip or a bad inspiration, it will be written against you. Not only in, du in dunya life, only when you do a sin, it will be written against you. In Medina, if you have bad inspiration, it will be written against you. So we have to be careful. So also the presence of the shiuch is very risky. You have to keep adab with them. <laughs> Third, an yutabbik al nasiha To apply the advice that has been given to him. You don't know, might be the sheikh has pushed one of his murids, say, advise this one, he might listen to you more than me. Beginners is like that. They might listen from their friends more than what they listen from the sheikh. Because they came to the sheikh through their friends. That's why the infrastructure is made mostly by murids. The infrastructure, like I received a call from Ethiopia. Uh, we didn't know who are this. And that person said, and by email also, he said that we are 22 or 23 Naqshbandis there. We heard about Sufi life. We checked it and we took, took Bayah online. And now what we have to do? And we meet together, we have the CD of the Zikr, put the Zikr and listen. So what to do? Look, between Murits to Murits, they guide them. The relationship. They saw Sufi life, they were happy, or they might see any other, another web or station. They be happy, they follow. And Allah said in Holy... Uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said If Allah guides through you one person to Islam or to Iman is better from the wealth of dunya. Everyone is running in his life for the wealth of dunya. But Prophet is saying to you I give you the wealth of dunya through guidance, through you, your guidance, through your nasiha to people that they will be brought to Islam or Iman. So, you don't know out of the blue someone will come and say, I, I know you. Many, I meet many Pakistanis. Many. I, I didn't go to Pakistan. But I meet many Pakistanis. They say, we saw you. We know you. I know. They know. Because of what? Because one tells the other. Because of this kind of technology that is being used in the right way. Because of the work that Maurits are doing to help. You cannot do the work by yourself. The Maurits in every country has to help, has to work. So they do the infrastructure, so the Sheikh comes, put his touch on it. That's why to apply the nasiha is important. Because when you apply it, you learn it, then you can 
see if someone else is doing the same mistake you are doing, you will tell him how to fix it, to fix himself. Now third, التواضع لهم والإنصاف معهم To be humble with them. And insaf, to be fair to them. وخدمتهم بقدر الإمكان And to help them in any way possible. So not only to give them advice, but also the third one is to give them respect, humbleness, and fairness. Al-insaf means to excuse them if they make a mistake, so you advise them. You don't go and publish and expose their mistakes. Today, they get revenge from each other. They are followers of same sheikh. You can see some of them, they are taking revenge from each other. I am better, you are better. And backbite in the back. In every, in many, it's dunya, shaitan is playing with everyone. Between ulama you have this problem, between the shiuch you must, you can find some problems, between representative you find problems, between murid you find problems. So it's, bec it's becoming a very difficult way and situation. Alhamdulillah, we have to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he called us and directed us and guided us to our teacher, may Allah bless his soul. Amen. And to find a teacher like that, you cannot anymore in our, in our uh, tariqah, not in the Naqshbandi as a whole, because there are too many branches. In this al nazimiyah branch, Back to Mawlana Sheikh Nazim name. To find like a Mawlana in 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 our, in our group between our groups is impossible. No way. That's why our Sheikh, we cannot exchange him. He is living within our hearts. He is bal ahyaun عند ربهم يرزقون. لا تحسبن الذين لا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون. Don't think that those who be who died killed dead. No, they are alive. In Allah's presence. Allah said, بَلْ أَحْيَوْنَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَكُونَ They are alive in the divine presence provided with spiritual food. لَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا Don't think those who have been killed. There is those who killed their desires. لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Allah said, أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Verily, Allah saints, they have nothing to fear or to be sad of. Those who killed their desires, their bad desires. I will tell you a, a, an example. We used to go and visit all the time Grand Sheikh and pass by Maulana Sheikh Nazim's house. Before I got married to his daughter, we we sleep. There is a room downstairs. There is the house is two two floors, two rooms up, two rooms down. And you can see that 
at night, any anyone goes down to go to bathroom or go to the living room, the second living room or the kitchen, you can see him and you can hear him. One time, it's like one, two in the morning. And I saw Maulana coming down, going to the kitchen, open the ca cupboard, cupboard, and checking the food. I came, said salam to Maulana, and watching, and he was checking the food. Is there any f rotten food? He found some rotten food, covered it, put it on the side. He didn't say anything to me. I went to pray to Hajjot. Next day in the morning, breakfast time, they put the food. Alhamdulillah, nice food. And there were like five, six people came from outside. They said to eat. And Maulana bring that plate that he covered and he ate that food. And made everyone to eat from the normal food. Then he looked at me, he said, this is Allah's favors who step on Allah's favor and don't give it adab and respect, Allah will step, make someone to step on him. How you can find like that? Go and eat the rotten food. The food that's smelly. There is no fridge at that time. It was a cupboard. Today, if you don't have a nice food, you don't touch it even. Forget about smelly food. Smelly food is easy. B bad food is what is. He doesn't. He he didn't say to anyone. But I saw the plate, and he saw me that I saw the plate. So where could you can find someone to? Uh, to sit in his place. It's no way. So, Murits to Murits build the infrastructure. And the Sheikh come, infrastructure ready, and he comes to give his speech. We tried our best, American people, Muslim, American Muslim, Mu'min, converts, for many, many years to to um, uh, uh, his order, to execute his order to us that I want you to stand and debate the Wahhabi ideology. We did, and many, some people here, they were in that time. And we begin that, me and this gentleman, Mateen Siddiqui. And Alhamdulillah, we were successful. No one at that time knows what is Wahhabi or Salafi. We were doing the infrastructure. When it was ready, we planned a conference. And we had 157 speakers. Not 10 speakers or 20 speakers or 30 speakers. 157 speakers from l titles of grand muftis and ministers and uh, normal people, common people, common Muslim, 
non-Muslim in Los Angeles. All this is done by the American Muslim people, Murids. And it was one of the best conferences attended by 10,000 people. And we brought Maulana Sheikh on top of all, all these speakers to give his uh, keynote speaker. He is the guest of honor. And it was broadcasted everywhere. The Sheikh is not going to do it. His murid has to do, to prepare, and then he comes. Similarly, we did after two years another one in Washington. Attended also by around 10,000, 8,000. And we brought Maulana with all these grand muftis of Central Asia. They were sitting in the Congress, we, uh, hire, we took a uh, reserved a room through some people, a big room that they give uh, lectures in it, and it it is the platform is like stages, so there you have some people sitting, uh, uh, congressmen sitting here, then senator sitting up, then Maulana Sheikh sitting on the top, with these uh, grand muftis, some of them. And he gave his speech, and it was broadcasted also. That would be enough. We did a lot of on the site conferences and all of that for what? To show the love and respect and the charisma and the knowledge and the spirit and the humbleness of our teacher. You do this for what? F for love. You are not going to do this for anybody. We didn't benefit anything uh, money-wise. We paid from our pockets to do that. We didn't ask anyone to pay for us. We managed from the Murids to support and pay that conference these two conferences. Why you do that? For what reason? You can do it for yourself to be to promote yourself you can do that. But no. You have to do it for the one that can guide you to the shore of safety. So Murids to each other build up some the new ones in order to know to guide them through the real way not to fight with each other now today this group is my group this group is his group this group is for that person that one for that one there is no network we try to make network but there is no network, a real network. We, we connect with many other groups around the world, but we hope that network, inshallah, will be able to do. So, out of humbleness that your sheikh teach you, you try to teach the other. Four, to have husnuzan, to have good thought between each other, not to have bad thought. And don't be busy with their mistakes, but guide them. Don't criticize them for their mistake. Today they criticize you, in, instead of building up, they destroy more. And we say to everyone that they are have shiuch. They took the hand of their shiuch from any tariqa. To keep good thoughts between 
the shares and the followers and the followers and followers. It is said, وَلَا تَرَى الْعَيْبَ إِلَّا فِيكَ Don't see the defect except in you. Don't see the defect in your brother coming from him. It's your defect. Because Prophet ﷺ said, المؤمن ومرآت المؤمن Mu'min is the mirror of the Mu'min. So when you look at him, it, it is the mirror. It reflects your character in his mirror. So that's why it is said, don't see the defect except in you. Don't see the mistake except in you. Don't make yourself out as if you are the great advisor or great innocent person. No, you are not. We must tell ourselves, we don't excuse, وَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't try to give importance to yourself. مُعْتَكِدًا عَيْبًا بَدَا بَيِّنًا لَكِنَّهُ اسْتَتَرَ So don't see the defect except in you. You've felt there is something wrong, but it is hidden. It was hidden. So don't expose it. Don't expose other people, other murid's mistakes. Eight. And this is important for Ahl al-Tasawwuf. أن لا يطلب الرئاسة والتقدم عليهم لأن طالب الولاية لا يولى. Don't ask or request to be the top, the leader, and to over go up over. Don't, don't ask yourself to be the leader over them. Because the one who is asking for leadership will never will be given to him. You ask for leadership, you will not take it. There are, I know, so there are some people asking for physically, they asked Maulana physically for leadership. Amala didn't give. Real leadership. So don't try to ask the Sheikh for leadership. That means you are your ego is asking for that. Like the alim that came to his Sheikh and said, I mentioned that before, that I will summarize it that I am 27 years with you, I'm alim, no alim, so inshallah tomorrow we will speak about the alim, the importance of alim, of knowledge. I'm alim, I am with you 27 years, oh my sheikh, I love you, but I never get anything, and don't feel anything in my heart. Whoa. And someone come for two, three days, through one year, two years, he become a representative for you. And I have no one. You are not giving me anything. Oh, mashallah. Oh, yeah. It's good. He is questioning his teacher. He said, oh, my son, if you want, I will give to you. But first, I want you to go to the city, buy a basket, fill it with walnut, and put it, go to the masjid, sit at the door, and everyone goes inside, say to him, hit me with my shoes on my head, I give you one walnut. Hit me twice, I give you two walnuts. When you finish your basket, come to me, I give you the alam. He said, I don't want this alam. <laughs> 27 years, he lost everything because of his arrogance. Because he is asking for leadership. 
He, did, he was not able to do it. He ran away from it. He cannot show himself to people whom they know him. He is a alim sitting at the masjid door and people are hitting him on his head with his shoes and giving them a walnut. Yeah, the sheikh wants him to humble himself down want to crack that stone. If he, wa he stayed a little bit, the Sheikh was able to crack that stone and bring the jewel up. But it was not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, teach us respect to our Shiyu. It is said, that a tasawwuf kulluhu adab. Tasawwuf, all of it is discipline. Don't look for other than discipline. The alim, you have to know sharia. You have to know fuqh. You have to know hadith. We'll come to it tomorrow. But on the, on the other side, tasawwuf is you have to know sharia, uh, sharia, uh, uh, fuqh hadith, tafsir, besides you are learning tasawwuf. You cannot drop the sharia and say, I am Sufi. No, you are not Sufi, you are nothing. You are you are uh, unbeliever. Islam cannot accept that. At tasawwuf kullu adab. Everything in tasawwuf is adab. Everything in Islam is sharia. adab. For every moment, there is etiquette. adab. For every state you are in, there is discipline. There is etiquette. adab. And for every level you are, there is the etiquette. فَمَنْ لَزِمَ الْأَدَبْ بَلَغَ مَبْلِغَ الرِّجَالِ Who keep the adab, the discipline, the etiquette, he will reach the manhood. We didn't reach manhood. Man and woman, this is a general meaning we use in Arabic. We didn't reach manhood. مَبْلَغَ الرِّجَالِ means man and woman, they can reach the level of manhood, maturity, in studying tasawwuf and studying sharia. And anyone who didn't get or is deprived from knowing adab to carry that responsibility, he will be far away from the reality. Because Prophet ﷺ said, I have been sent. All this comes under that hadith. All this tasawwuf, all these uh, disciplines and principles in Islam goes under that hadith. I have been sent. I have been sent to complete or to perfect the good manners in you. So he wants to, to keep us in the good way, in the good manners, because Sharia is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adab is for you. Sharia, sharia is the way that you make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happy with you. It's an obligation. Tasawwuf is coming to decorate that obligation, to decorate you. It's like you have a warehouse and then you put cal calligraphy on the wall, decorate the wall. That is tasawwuf. The warehouse is sharia. So sharia is the house and tasawwuf is the decoration in the house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and accept from us and Insha'Allah, we will mention about al-alim, knowledge tomorrow.
ومن الله التوفيق بحرمة الفاتحة. And we mention also one, one hadith that make every one of you happy. Every, every Muslim and Mu'min happy, inshallah. One hadith, to know one hadith from Prophet sallallahu alayhi will save you dunya and akhirah. That hadith, inshallah, tomorrow will save us dunya and akhirah. And it's so easy, so simple. But it's, it is very, has a big meaning, deep meaning, and a prediction from Prophet ﷺ that carry a lot of mercy with it to the people of today. May Allah forgive us. Bi hurmat al-Habib, bi hurmat al-Fatiha.